guys, this is Phil from UndercageDotcom, and this is the iPhone 6s Plus. Of course, it's the 6s Plus because it's in pink. Well, as Apple calls it, it's in rose gold, but um, it seems nothing more than a metallic pink to me. But, you know, everybody's got their own taste, so here's the pink iPhone 6s Plus. Of course, this is an iPhone Plus and the iPhone 6s series at the same time, so it's going to overlap a lot with the previous reviews, but it's got main differences, including the battery, screen size, and the optical image stabilizer. So stick with us while we get through the iPhone 6s Plus. So on front, we got the usual 5.5 inches of full HD display on the top receiver, front-facing camera that's upgraded, and the proximity sensor. And under the display, we have the home key that's enabled with the fingerprint reader, Touch ID, as Apple names it, and um, it's now twice as fast than the usual. Uh, and it's really fast, it's blazing fast, and we'll get to that just in a second. And on the right, we got the power key with the Nano SIM card tray, on the lightning port, earphone jack, microphone, speaker, the usual array of the ports, and the mute toggle key, volume rocker, and nothing to the top, and on the back, we have an upgraded 8 megapixel to 12 megapixels of a camera and the LED flash secondary microphone and there is an Apple logo. Under uh, there is an iPhone logo along with the S badge to claim that this is indeed the latest and finest generations of the iPhone. If you happen to not get the pink one, but rather an old generation space gray, silver or gold, this would be the only thing that tells your iPhone different from the previous generations of the iPhone because that ugly line is still there and the new color doesn't really do much good about it, this is the same weird big iPhone. I personally think Apple's not doing a right job at making a bigger phone. It's not that I want to stick to the tradition, it's just that Apple's doing a bad job at it. So here's it. And uh, unlike the previous generations, the iPhone that has suffered from the bend gate, it bent right there, uh, is now comes with the stainless steel 7000 series so it's stronger simply put it's just a stronger material whilst it's a bit heavier it's actually not a bit heavier it's actually heavier by 20 grams so if you happen to put your iphone 6s plus on your shirt pocket just like there uh, it's definitely gonna wait a lot so um although it's big enough to weigh that much i think it's too much for a phone to weigh that much and that goes the same with lgv 10 u all right, so um, it's a bit chunky, I would say. I know there are a lot to put on the bezels on top over there and on the bottom right there, but, you know, please, even with the fingerprint reader and a lot to put there, th isn't that too much? You know, out of all the phones, iPhone doesn't have to anything to say to the iPhone's, uh, the HTC's bezels because they have the same screen-to-body ratio of 67.7%. It's nearly as big, and it's got the same display size. So Galaxies, LGs, and Sonys can say a lot. Actually, Sonys can't. But hey, the iPhones, they can't say anything to HTC bezels. Sorry, A16. But let's dive right into it. So uh, you can unlock the phone with the fingerprint reader. Of course, that was blazing fast. That's too fast that you can't even look at the notifications. So if you want to do that, you'll have to press wearily at unregistered fingers, or you'll have to get back to the good old power key there to see your notification or to control your music with the lock screen or even to see that gorgeous live uh, live photo lock screen to press that because your finger is going to lock too fast. Okay, before we get to that, let's talk about the display. Now the display is bright, accurate, and color reproduction is just great. And outside legibility is better than any other phone. Actually, there are some better ones. But anyway, it's just top uh, top-notch display. I don't really I really don't see much of improvements to go around here in a positive way So good that I don't see anything to be improved uh, It still sticks at the full HD resolution, but I don't see really going Bumping through the resolution to QHD or even higher like the Xperia Z5 premium Isn't gonna do much good to the iPhone 6s plus since Apple is not very generous with the battery capacity and their optimization is seldom not that good. So there's this place really good. Now the call and the sound quality, of course the call quality is good. It's an Apple product since the iPhone 5. Uh, it's got a good call quality. Um, the, the other party could hear me well and so could I have. And the sound quality coming from both the earphone and the speaker is just great. Uh, we all love the, I all love the Apple sound quality and the speaker especially. You don't really get to find this good of a speaker in most of the smartphones. And it, for a modern smartphone, this is really, really good. Now, the camera is upgraded. Barely. 
it's got more pixels from 8 megapixels to 12 megapixels it's got a bump in a resolution but that's pretty much it it still suffers in the low lighting conditions and this is far surpassed by any other competitors out there uh, like the Galaxy or the LG or even Nokia, they take a far better low lighting condition pictures and they should definitely do something about it. There was a time where iPhone had a best camera, but uh-uh, not anymore. Now get your work together, Apple. And they added up the 4K video editing, which you have to go through the menu, to the bottom, to the here, until you see the photos and camera, and you have to reach the 4K at 30 FPS, where you can enable your 4K video. Uh, it does take the 4K video and it, it does it in a pretty nice way with the good OIS image stabilizer built inside. Sorry, that was redundant, but built inside. But honestly, Android and even Windows Phone, even Windows Phone, have been taking 4K videos. So that's, isn't that quite late? You know, so of course Apple does everything late, but everything in a great quality. But 4K video, it's been years, literally. Now, the... Now, the 4K, aside from the 4K video, live photo is another fun feature where we can enable that from top over there. It basically takes a one and a half second before and after the video, uh, the photo that you take. It does it automatically, so you can tap on that, and in a half and a second, it's gonna ding and let you know that your live photo is done. So, I don't know. For me, it just feels like I have to be holding this steadily until that my phone tells me, okay, you are allowed to let your phone go. So, I don't know, I don't feel completely comfortable, I should say, by taking the live photo. So most of the times, I happen to turn that just simply off. And plus, that technically, it takes a short 1.5 seconds of MOV files uh, uh, back and front of the photo. So that's taking about as twice as much as the f normal photos would. So I ended up turning it only the times that, you know, it, it was worth live photoing it. Now the retina flash is also added and it sounds nice but uh, a lot of phones actually have a front facing camera including the Moto X Pure Edition, that's Moto, Moto X Play, sorry Moto X, what was that? Moto X Style, Style Pure Edition, uh, has the front facing flash and desire eye, there's a lot but uh, Apple decided to take the other way around to enable that, um, you can enable that in the option if you don't want to opt into the auto mode you can do that and your screen is gonna blink a lot brighter than it usually would so that works as a flash but you know these emulating functions are not as good as the real flash so I really don't recommend that uh, since it just makes photos more shaky to me So. That was basically the photos. Now the performance wise, before we get into any performance bumps that Apple was generous enough to include, we have to deal with the 16 gigabytes of storage. Now the 16 gigabytes may not sound that bad because you, you, you tried the iPhone 4 with 16 gigabytes, iPhone 3GS with the 16 gigabytes, but come on, this is different. Now, 30 years has passed by, it's not you. You stuck with the 16 gigabytes of your own content, but everybody else in the world have been upgraded to 4K or 2K Full HD, whatever they are, the web caches have bumped, the apps have bumped, everything's bumped in into their size, well, partially to the Apple's uh, universal apps, they're bigger, so everything else is big, you can't just stand in your 16 gigabytes of box forever, but Apple decided to, decided to opt in for the 16 gigabyte base model, come on, and you have to spend a lot to get a bump to the 64, 64 gigabytes. That's just like a price upgrade. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think that's cool, Apple. You don't even have a micro SD card slot. I'm not even asking for one, just 16 gigabyte base storage. That's not enough. And you give like a little high class storage in the first place. So 16 gigabytes, really. And another thing is TSMC and the Samsung manufacturer's A9 processor. So they have two different factories and they come in two different architectures 14 nanometers and 16 nanometers so the results uh, from the labs has came in differently than we thought but still there are differences and there's up to 10 to 15 percent of the battery life differences between those two manufacturing processes so and you can't know that until you open this up or you install the little nifty app from taiwan to let uh, your phone tell you which ap manufacturers you have I don't know, it's, it's not exactly a big thing. MLC and TLC issues have passed by and it seems like nobody actually cares about it. I haven't seen a single listing on eBay that lists their phone as an MLC iPhone 6. Actually, I've seen some. But, 
you know, it's just not nice. Of course, technically they might be similar, but they're not the same. And you can't know that until you get your iPhone. So unless Apple wants us to return our iPhone, if we don't like the manufacturer of the IP, they better stop this. I know all the circumstances behind that, but still, it doesn't really feel nice, right? Aside from that, the upgraded A9 chipset does its job and is fast enough. And especially uh, what I want to point out is the upgraded RAM. Now, finally, Apple has included two gigabytes, not like a four or three like the Android phones have because iOS is so much better. It is better in some sense, but please. Uh, but included the two gigabytes of RAM and that double the RAM definitely lessens the Safari crashes that we have been getting our pains from. And that's definitely an upgrade. I like that. So the A9 chipset itself is um, promising the 70% upgrade for the CPU and the 90% for the GPU. I'm not really sure about that, but the apps or the games definitely load up faster. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we talked about Touch ID is so fast that even Touch ID is fast. They really got to do something about it. Now the software wise, iOS 9 mainly focuses on the performance improvements and we're not really sure about that. It definitely works better than the iPhone 6 Plus's initial version because I iPhone 6 Plus's multitasking panel and pretty much everything was sluggish, but um, it's not the case with the iPhone 6 S Plus. It's just smooth. Finally, Apple has a smooth plus big phone. Uh, so aside from that, iOS 9 uh, adds up a lot of features like the added notes or reminder. There are more features, but uh, it does have bugs, uh, especially coming from the 0, uh, 0 kind of builds, the early stage builds. It definitely comes with a bug. And uh, 3D Touch is, of course, the killer feature over there, but I'm not really sure if it's just a killer. It's just there. It works. So you can press hard on your phone to on your screen to get options not all, uh, not all the native apps supported there are some that do, uh, that some that do there are some that don't you can actually change the settings of how hard you want to press your screen to enable the 3d uh, touch or you can completely disable that in the accessibility right there there's a 3d touch option um, but aside from that, not a lot of uh, third-party apps support that. Only the big players like the Facebook or Instagram are currently up for it. And you got to wait for it. While it's useful in some situations, like the peek and pop, or you can peek and scroll up to copy or send the text. And reminders, you can set more with the peek and pop 3D function. You can do that. Uh, but um, while we're going to be waiting for the uh, third-party apps, I don't think it's that useful. Of course, games are going to be using a whole lot of the 3D touch functions. But for now, eh, it's fun, but so what? But what, the one thing that I do like is that you can preview your message without reading it. So some messengers, WhatsApp, is going to be <laughs> able to read without uh, getting re uh, removing that red flag. So... Um, if WhatsApp or other messengers support it, that's gonna be great. You don't have to make your excuses for not replying after reading your message. And of course, this the cursor movements, the, you can press hard on the keyboard to move your cursor instead of doing this. So that's a very good thing. This is one of the killer features on the 3D Touch that I really liked. Of course, based on the iPad, it's not really requiring the 3D Touch. You can just do that with two fingers, but still, it's there, it's good. Uh, but not with the 3D Touch. What I really like about the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus is the Taptic Engine. I think that is a killer feature. Now, it doesn't only work with the 3D Touch. It also works with quite every vibration you have. So, of course, with the 3D Touch, it's going to tell you with the Taptic Engine, like, it's going to vibrate harder if it's um, peaking and popping. But aside from that, messages and phone calls are totally different. While the Old generation vibration was like boom, and then you'll have a constant vibration or the pattern that you set. Now the Taptic Engine gently alerts you. It's like, beep, beep, you got a message. It's really nice. It feels really nice. I'm never expecting a phone call or the message because they used to annoy me a lot when they vibrated in my pocket, but this feels totally nice. Now to the battery life. Of course, one of the good things about the pluses is that it's got a giant battery. Of course, it's not par with the other Android phones. Like, the, like there, there's Blue Studio Energy and the Energy X that's like 4,000 milliamps of battery and the 5,000 milliamps of battery. It's not as big as that, but from the iPhone world, this is the longest lasting iPhone ever. And while I have zero battery when I get home with the iPhone 6S, this lasts about 30% more juice 
uh, when I head home. So that's definitely a good thing. Uh, the overall usage time while iPhone 6s remains about a six and a half hours to seven hours, this guy endures into nine hours in total. So that's definitely a plus. As an iPhone, it doesn't overwhelm any competitors in any particular parts. It doesn't have the best screen. It doesn't have the best camera. It doesn't have the best battery. It doesn't have the best phone call quality. But it's all around all very balanced well. This is one of the things that I get surprised every time I review an iPhone. They're incredibly well balanced. While the design itself aesthetically is terribly balanced. I think this is just a weird zoomed up iPhone still after a year after the plus uh this still is one of the best iphone especially if you're looking for a battery while in ta uh, tacting out with the ios uh ecosystem so that was iphone 6s plus do you want to upgrade maybe if you're coming from a generation behind and beyond that but if you're just coming from the iphone 6 plus man eh, not really the killer features that apple promises aren't really that killer they're like an assault more likely Sorry, bad joke. But anyway, so that was the iPhone 6S Plus.